Welcome to Next to Madison, a podcast to help you live your best life. Hey, you're listening to another episode of Next to Madison. We have all heard of Uber. We have all heard of Airbnb and how they revolutionized their industries and disrupted them. But now we are going to hear from a gentleman who started a new fitness app that is revolutionizing how trainers can work with their clients and how people can have access to trainers all over the world through this app. So I'm very excited to hear about this. Um, This is a a serial entrepreneur who has done a lot of businesses. Uh, He worked for the UN. He started energy companies in Somalia. He's done um, uh, an AI company. uh, And now he's onto this. He wanted to start it uh, to fill a need. And we're going to hear more about that. And uh, I'm excited because I kind of miss the Uber investment. I miss the Airbnb one. And I'm excited because if this is revolutionizing the fitness industry, which is such a big industry because it's so important that we stay healthy in these times, uh, I'm excited to learn more and uh, keep an eye on this company. So um, we'll be right back with our guest who is going to talk about this new company he created and how it's revolutionizing the fitness industry. And if you are a fitness trainer, do not turn off this episode. You absolutely have to listen to this. It's a, it's a way to increase your business. Uh, and if you are somebody who, who is in an area where you want access to better trainers and a better fitness guide, well, this episode is for you too. I'm now with our very special guest on Next to Madison. Uh, I'd like to welcome Kristen DeRosier. How are you? Hello. Good. Um, thanks for having me on your show. Yeah. So I'm, I'm so excited. And kind of in the intro, I kind of talked about how you created this app out of a need, uh, this fitness app that's called Rec, and you can find it on, go to the iTunes store, Google Play, you can find it there, download it. But you really kind of, it's kind of the, the Airbnb of fitness, so to say, right? It's revolutionizing the fitness world. There were so many fitness apps that were already out there. I use some of them myself. There was a girl who started doing fitness classes on Instagram named Kelly Berger. She's like an Olympic lacrosse player. And I was following them. And then it, she had such a demand that she started her own app and her own um, website called Resistance Fitness HQ. And I use it, but I also have a gym membership. But you, you, there was a need there that you couldn't fulfill. So go ahead and, and tell us about that. Sure. So I think, I mean, the example you brought up is an interesting one and kind of is at the heart of what we're, what we believe at REC. So uh, if I understand correctly, what you're describing is there's a particular athlete uh, who you resonated with. They had a particular approach to fitness uh, and they, uh, they went kind of like really far uh, in the direction of like building a business around their brand. Um, But kind of our thesis is that uh, like basically pretty much every trainer has their own approach to fitness. Uh, even if you're in a particular kind of, like if you go to a boxing, if you go to a boxing gym, you're into boxing, let's say there's 10 different boxing trainers there. Each of them is going to have their own view, uh, on their own approach to it, their own approach to training, their own approach to sparring, uh, and their own kind of attitude and even kind of stuff as uh, as specific as they have particular music they like to listen to and a particular vibe uh, for their classes. And so what REC enables these trainers to do is to turn their vibe into a business, into a brand uh, and monetize it the way that a gym has a brand and monetizes that brand. Uh, much like kind of Peloton versus Equinox versus Planet Fitness um, versus, I don't know. I mean, there's a million of these brands out there and each of them kind of, they, they have a particular vibe. They're reinforcing the vibe and you as a consumer, uh, you're like, okay, I'm looking for a, a particular kind of yoga. You find the studio that does the kind of yoga, um, that you're interested in and you sign up. And so we're kind of taking it further and allowing trainers, uh, to monetize, uh, and build their brands the same way that gyms do. Um, and the reason why we think this is so important is that the economics for trainers uh, at gyms is it's not great for the trainer. Uh, so in a, a major city, 
Um, you as a consumer might pay 30, 35, maybe even 40 bucks to attend a group fitness class. Um, there might be uh, 20, 30, maybe 40 people there uh, in the class. The, the revenue for the class is five, six, seven hundred dollars. Um, the trainer is typically leaving there with like fifty dollars um, and the gym's taking the rest. And on top of that, the trainers don't even set their own schedule. Uh, the gym will say, hey, um, Madison, you can do the 6 a.m. on Tuesday, the 3 p.m. on Wednesday, and then 8, 9, and 10 p.m., 10 a.m. back to back on Thursday. Um, so there's a lot of things kind of, uh, kind of keeping trainer incomes low. And we built Rec uh, to make it easier uh, for trainers to create and uh, to create merchandise uh, their group classes and have them anywhere in parks, in spaces they have access to um, pretty much anywhere that they can uh, kind of host a class. And which is great because when I was talking about that girl who created it, obviously she had some resources and some money behind her in order to do it. But a lot of, of these amazing trainers maybe don't have those resources or know where to go. And this sounds like a great thing that they can, so they pretty much, as a trainer, they download the app and then there's a place where they can sign up to be a trainer. And so what's the process for them as a, as a business provider, like as a trainer? Right. So, I mean, you make a, a really kind of important point. So the, the hurdle, I mean, in your example, they went through all this trouble to build this brand is, I'm going to guess, pretty capital intensive. Uh, there is a, probably a lot of risk involving like, I'm going to stop making income training to work on this thing. And I hope that it pays off in spades later. Uh, or the other path is, I'm a really successful trainer. I'm going to invest a bunch of money and set up my own gym. Uh, and like, that's kind of the alternative. And there's a lot of risks there. Uh, right. And with Rec, we really lower the bar. Uh, so the process to get started with us is you literally just download the app. You can click a button to create a class and you, you name your class, you upload a picture, uh, you say where it is, you say the price, the number of attendees and kind of other, like if there's special instructions about equipment you need to bring or levels of experience. So you just kind of create the event um, and that ends up on our map. So we have a Yelp style map. Uh, so it'll just appear on this map uh, and consumers can click on that icon on the map and sign up for it. And at the same time, um, every class gets its own URL. So it gets its own little web page. Uh, and a lot of trainers, they wow. have decent followings on their Instagram accounts. Uh, and that's kind of where they run their business and build their brand. And so a lot of trainers on our platform, they, some of their signups will come through the app, but they also take the link and they stick it in their Instagram bio. And they make a post saying, hey, whatever, all my followers who are in New York, I'm like, you, have you ever wanted to do a class with me? There's a link in the bio, click it, sign up. So, and are you vetting these trainers? Like, if, you know, for example, after we get off this podcast, uh, I'm going to wrap up a couple more meetings and then I'm going to head to the gym. And I'm trying to, you know, get more fit, not skinnier, but more fit. And I'm thinking to myself, why am I not capitalizing on my own workouts? Is this something that I could then sign up for and bring my followers to? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's absolutely. Same with results, like, you know, here's a, here's another way to kind of build your build your name, or so to say. Uh, right, exactly. So, I mean, anyone can go create a class. Uh, we have, uh, like we monitor the trainers that are on the platform and, uh, we, we have had zero, uh, kind of complaints so far about the trainers on our platform, but I mean, we, we do monitor it. And if people flag uh, a trainer as kind of not being professional for whatever reason, uh, we'll remove them. Um, but by default, the platform is totally open. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you have whatever, let's say you have some particular approach to stretching that is special and you think other people are interested in and um, you think you can build into a business, whether it's a full-time thing or maybe you just want to make a few extra bucks on the weekend, yeah. um, you could create whatever, Madison's stretching class uh, on the rooftop of this building um, and it costs $20 and it's at this time. 
So can you do it where it's digital though? Like if people don't wanna, wanna um, if they can't make it to your location, can you also stream it? So we do allow, um, you can uh, drop Zoom links or kind of other um, kind of video links uh, into the events and do, do video virtual classes through our platform. We really don't focus on that for a few reasons. Uh, our real, the thing, the real specific problem we're trying to solve for both side, both the trainer side and the consumer side uh, is really easy, hyper-local discovery uh, of uh, events that are really convenient. Uh, so it's for the person who uh, maybe is into a particular kind of yoga or particular, like they're into boxing or Muay Thai, uh, and they don't live that close to a gym, um, but they want to uh, maybe some, a couple hours freed up in their schedule, and they want to find something around the corner. Um, that we are really trying to solve the problem for people who want to do in-person group fitness. And even with the explosion of like Peloton and Mirror and these platforms, these most people, they don't want to only do Peloton. Uh, sometimes you want to be around people or, you, or maybe you just want to mix up your routine. Um, so even if you have these kinds of uh, platforms, uh, there's uh, people want to connect. People want to do stuff in person and people want to get outside. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. So, okay. So that's, that's great. And it's probably, I mean, I could be totally wrong on the economics, but it's actually, let's flip to the consumer side, going to a soul cycle. I didn't really go to a soul cycle unless my friends were like, let's go to soul cycle and then go to dinner. And it was just a social thing. And it's like, I thought it was pointless. $40 for a 45 minute class, please. And That's the trainer is not getting that much of that money. Exactly. So they could probably, you, you probably could get these group fitness classes for actually maybe cheaper. Yeah. And the, so on our platform, the trainer sets the price. Uh, so okay. if a trainer wants to set it at $40 and they can do it, great. But we have a, like, we do have classes that are expensive. Um, but we also have classes that are like $15 yoga in the park. Um, exactly. And the, the cool thing about those, I, I've been to, I mean, I use the platform and I've been to both kinds of classes. The cool thing about the like, I mean, I like the premium classes, but also it's cool to just, uh, like sometimes I'm just at the park and you know that there's classes happening all around, but it's impossible without a platform, it's impossible to know what starts in 30 minutes and how to sign up for it and who's doing it. Uh, so you can be at the park and you're like, oh, I. I want to do something, you open the app and you can say, oh, there's a $15 yoga class starting in 30 minutes, like over on that corner of the park. Uh, and you can sign up for it the same way that you would sign up for a class at a gym. That's, I mean, that, that's amazing. And it really is one of those things because all the fitness, they're, they're very tied to a specific brand or a specific company, you know, where this is kind of, yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, I, I'll go into Google and type in, you know, Chinese restaurants near me if I wanted Chinese food. But this is kind of good. I can say, you know, booty blasting trainers near this place and, and it, it'll pop up. And obviously as it grows, there'll be more of that kind of come around. So how are you getting the word out there to expand the brand? Yeah, so a lot of, so on the, the, the key is, it, it really, tra most trainers, they have audiences. Uh, really the status quo for them is they build and maintain their brands on their Instagram. Uh, people who are into specific trainers will follow them and so they have this audience there uh, and by reaching the trainers uh, they um, they in turn kind of get the word out to their audiences uh, to sign up and then in, in terms of trainers I mean, it's uh, been we've done basically zero marketing to date and it's all been referrals and word of mouth the value proposition for the trainer is so insanely better uh, with us than with a gym. Um, so it's just, it's been pretty, uh, like eventually we're going to have to ramp up marketing efforts, but there's so much low hanging fruit in the market right now. Um, that it's, uh, we get a trainer on and people tell their friends or a lot of people who attend our classes, uh, have been like, Oh wow, this is really cool. My sister does yoga uh, whatever in New Jersey, I'm going to tell her to get her trainer on. 
Uh, it's been a lot of that. So what are, what's kind of the economics then? What is, do you take a cut of what the trainer makes? Right. So, um, we take a percentage, uh, we take, uh, we originally were taking 10% uh, transaction fee, uh, which is the complete inverse of the status quo from a gym. So with the gym, the trainer's typically getting 10%, the gym's taking 90. Um, right. We give the trainer 90 and we're taking 10. We actually have, uh, as like a promo, uh, temporarily dropped our fees to zero. Uh, and all the trainers that uh, join this summer um, or up to Labor Day, um, they'll, have, uh, they'll have no fees. Um, so that's the, the general fee structure. Um, and we will soon be introducing um, like a premium tier uh, where you can pay us a subscription fee and get um, kind of lower or zero uh, transaction fees and a few other benefits. That, I mean, that's so cool. Cause I, and like all these different trainers that I know or, or friends that are, you know, teaching classes with, no, I can't wait to tell them about this because I think it's great because, yeah, they are working at gyms and just getting pillaged, you know, financially. So it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a great way to, you know, and I said in the intro, I was like, I missed out on Uber. I missed out on Airbnb. I'm not missing out when you guys IPO. I feel it. I feel it coming down the pipeline. And I'm usually right when it comes about this stuff. So, but, it, but it's exciting, you know? Yeah, it's really cool. We, I mean, our view again. There's we perceive this big value leak um, at the again the the trainers generating the value. They're generating the loyalty. They're not getting the economics on it. So, I mean, we see this big kind of structural mismatch between how value is created in the industry and who is rewarded for it. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, we view this um, whether we end up as MySpace or Facebook. Uh, is a different question, uh, but we view the like direction of this industry as inevitably heading uh, heading in this direction. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's like similar to Airbnb, uh, kind of the notion. It's a little bit less strange with us, but like it's still a good comparison with Airbnb. The right. notion that people would rent out their couch or some spare room that was like kind of crazy. Uh, no, but it, it's a little, of a stranger, right? Um, like all of these kinds of things seemed like implausible and maybe not that scalable. Uh, and then suddenly you realize like, oh, with Airbnb, suddenly there's this whole other kind of untapped uh, or kind of latent uh, value uh, in the hospitality industry that suddenly Airbnb unlocked with a platform for uh, listing these things. Uh, and having them be discovered and making transactions really easy. Um, and yeah, it was it, in retrospect, it was an inevitable kind of uh, advancement in the hospitality industry. And we view the fitness industry, uh, particularly in person group fitness, as kind of being in the like pre Airbnb stage, uh, where the, there's like a little bit mismatch, there's some latent, uh, some locked up value. And it's just waiting for a, a platform. I mean, it, it's great. You know, it's one of those ideas where like, why didn't I think about that? You know what I mean? It's such a, it's so simple, but yet so innovative. Oh, you I mean, I, I appreciate that. Where come from. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I think a lot of, I mean, I, I think a, just like a, a test of a good idea is like, yeah. does it seem obvious? Uh, like in retrospect, like once you say it, it's like, oh, well, obviously that should be the case. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, so that's cool. So what do you think, how do you think the fitness industry is going to change over the next five years with so many people kind of, they were removed from the gym because of COVID and they couldn't go to the gym and a lot of people got fat. And then, then they were like, Oh crap, the world's going to open up again. I got to get back to the gym, but people started doing alternative fitness things. So how do you think like, what's going to happen? Do you feel like gyms are gonna be there but not be what they were yeah so i i kind of i view i think there's three main things at play uh that were already and that were gonna happen regardless of covid and i think covid was an accelerant uh for some of these trends uh so on the one hand you have the the like at home fitness device industry 
uh, yeah. the Peloton, like anything from I have a bench press at home to I have a Peloton or I have a mirror um, or I mean, there's a million of these devices now. Um, there's certainly that certainly uh, has eaten uh, some or has kind of leached some of the money that used to go to gym memberships. Uh, and there's a huge convenience factor. And that's, that's only going to grow. And there's going to be more and more of these kinds of devices, and they're going to get cheaper and cheaper and better and better. Um, that is kind of that's inevitably going to grow. Um, even if you have those things, though, and not everyone's going to want them. Uh, again, sometimes you just want to be with people. Uh, I think most people would go insane if literally they just rode their Peloton every day for the rest of their life. Oh, uh, and so, totally. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, we view uh, rec and uh, kind of other complementary ways to get fitness, even as simple as like, I'm going to go for a run as, as complementary to those. I might have a Peloton, uh, but whatever, once a week, I just want to get out of the house uh, and I want to do a, uh, a fitness class um, or I've never tried Muay Thai before. And now suddenly there's an opportunity that's two blocks away. Um, so that, the trend of those at-home fitness devices is going to um, definitely continue. The other thing that um, was definitely going to always be a thing and was accelerated by COVID uh, was the at-home video workouts. Um, whether that's through an app or I just, there's some instructor, they have a website and I, uh, whatever, sign up for their uh, like Zoom classes. Um, that our view of that is, I think within five years, uh, there's gonna be a lot of consolidation in that space uh, for two reasons. Uh, one, it ultimately comes down to production quality. Um, so the people with the best produced videos are gonna win uh, because these products are infinitely scalable. Like once I create the video, it costs as much to create it to give it to 10 people as 10 million or even a billion people. Uh, so I think there's going to be consolidation about around the people who have the best production quality. Um, and that ultimately comes down to cost of capital. So I think it's going to be like the big behemoth uh, companies uh, that win that. And then a, another trend that is, I think, going to uh, coincide with that and be probably exponentially more transformative um, are AI technologies like deep fakes. Uh, so I think within uh -huh. five years... You, the the role of the the real trainer in video workouts is not going to exist. Uh, you're going to be able to say, I want a trainer who has this kind of vibe and looks like this and is whatever, 72% intense. Uh, and you'll get your own personal kind of like procedurally generated trainer who will interact with you in an on-demand basis. Um, it's yeah, so funny so you said that because the, the episode last week was, or right before this was about the metaverse, which I'm sure you're, you're aware of with, with your background. Um, and it, it was just, it was mind blowing, but that's exactly kind of where things are, things are moving is that we'll just kind of have these little avatars that we're listening to. Just scary, but got to right. change. And like similar to um, kind of like having a Peloton, you might also do these kinds of classes. But again, most people are not going to want to only do video workouts their whole life. Uh, sometimes yeah. you want to interact with people. Um, and then so this brings kind of leaves the, the core of the fitness industry, which is in-person group fitness. Um, and kind of that has... Uh, there was always kind of some fragmentation in it, but that's really fractured uh, like decisively as a result of COVID in places, especially where the gyms closed. Um, so, uh, I mean, gyms obviously suffered massively. Um, I believe the last report I read that it was typically a uh, gym memberships were like a $35 billion a year business in the U S and during COVID it dropped to 15. So the wiped out 20 billion of spending. Um, and so they obviously took a huge hit. Uh, it's probably going to grow back over time. Uh, if people have, every consumer has their own threshold about safety 
And like, at what point do I feel comfortable uh, going back into a gym? Um, but the kind of other side of group fitness is I, I'm willing to bet basically everyone witnessed is the hyper growth of out of the gym group fitness experiences. If you're, if you were in New York during COVID and you walked by a park, it was probably full of people and people were doing it any way they could, which mostly meant, uh, trainers coordinating via WhatsApp, Instagram, text message, trying to coordinate large groups of people, uh, and manage payments. And that's to say nothing about kind of like how you market to these people in the first place. Um, so there's kind of that, that particular aspect of the fitness industry. Uh, it saw, it like always existed a little bit. We saw hyper growth uh, in that area during COVID. And I think every trainer who was forced into the situation by necessity that they had to do it. And everyone realized, oh, like I can do this. Like, why would I go back to the old way? Uh, and let the gym reach into my pocket. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I mean, I joined a gym because um, I kind of went and hung out in Colorado for a while and, you know, I'm going to make my way back to New York. I'm just not ready yet. I'm kind of enjoying nature, if you know what I mean. Um, but I joined this gym and they offer all these classes and I, I love it. I love the, the group classes for sure. But yeah, it would be nice if it was kind of in a park or or outdoors or something totally different versus at the same place, you yeah. know? And, and some of our classes, different. some of our classes do happen indoors. Like we have some partner venues that we place trainers at. And also some of our trainers have access to their own venues. Um, yeah. like we have a really cool, um, like it's, it's in this like warehouse in East Williamsburg. It's got a bunch of heavy bags in it That's and awesome. there's like kind of cool gritty underground uh boxing classes that happen yeah um, so yeah they're like a lot of our inventory is outdoors but we also have uh indoor inventory as well yeah well that's cool i mean that's cool especially for the winter yeah exactly you know what i mean so are you in all 50 states right now no so we're primarily in new york uh we're starting we've started to run a few things in miami um, we're actually uh, really scaling up our Miami operations uh, in October. Um, but yeah, it's, it's mainly in New York, a little bit in Miami. Um, and we're uh, at the beginning of next year, we'll start expanding to other major cities. Okay, well, that's exciting. So you've got an exciting adventure ahead of you. Yeah, we're really looking forward to it. It's been uh, to get to the point where we're at, there's, yeah. I mean, as you might imagine, there was a lot of iteration, uh, kind of our view of how the best way to execute this and the, like the exact kind of line of attack um, that evolved uh, through a lot of trial and error and learning. And we're finally at the stage where uh, we, we got the insights we needed uh, and we, we kind of know what to do. And now it's uh, all about execution. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got some great uh, business partners with you involved in this. Yeah, so yeah, pulled together a great team. Um, uh, my two main co-founders uh, is Ryan, um, and he is an ex ClassPass uh, product and designer. Um, and then uh, Matt, who is a, he's a retired boxer. He has been a trainer and a gym owner. He owns a few gyms in New York and Miami and really under, has like a great network in the space. Um, uh, kind of understands the the mechanics of the industry well, um, and he he especially as a gym owner he kind of gets he like understood immediately like yeah this uh, the the status quo like couldn't continue forever. Yeah, absolutely. Is Class Pass still running? Uh, I I believe so. I mean, I would not. Uh, I, I personally don't use Class Pass, but um, right. yeah. I would be shocked if they disappeared. Right, that's true. Yeah, I remember I had some news of people, but I never, I never used it. I don't, I don't know why. Um, but the, so that's great. Was this a COVID-bred business? Like started when COVID happened, or was it before COVID? Um, I mean, it, there was the the kind of like germ of the idea uh, started before COVID. I, yeah. I, I kind of have like entrepreneur brain, and whenever I I'm just constantly thinking about when I encounter like kind of 
problems or frictions or things are just kind of inconvenient. Um, I'm always just kind of in the background thinking about how you could solve it. Um, and yeah, I had been thinking about it uh, before COVID. Um, and then I started kind of experiment, like kind of started talking to about talking about it with trainers and the people who eventually became the team. And we were kicking ideas back and forth. And we were like running some experiments, launching some beta versions, uh, not sure exactly where it was going to go. And honestly, um, not really expecting to build a business immediately. Uh, it was like, there's something here. Let's just experiment. Right. Uh, and then kind of it just snowballed. Um, yeah. Well, kudos to you. I think it's excellent. And you know, it's not only helping the consumer find what they want, but you're also helping the people that make it happen, which are the trainers. And so that's a great, a great thing and, and, a, and a platform for them to allow them to make more money because, you know, everybody needs trainers, but unfortunately they're not paid very well. And they're, you know, as you said, stuck to the schedule of the gym. So now they have a little more freedom, which is what we all want, right? We want more money and more freedom. That's right. it. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's great for the trainers for the reasons you described, but and then also for the consumer because now um, you don't have to be near specific kinds of gyms to do yeah. specific kinds of activities. Um, you can, and I, I keep bringing up boxing because I personally am a boxer, but uh, there's not like there's not even that many boxing gyms in New York, uh, and so if you live in New York and you're interested in boxing, you're probably still commuting like 30 minutes to an hour each way uh, sure. to get to your gym, and this makes it so you can find places to box and take boxing classes, depending on your neighborhood, five, 10 minutes away from where you are. Well, that's, that's great. And so are you seeing your every week, your, your numbers go up, like of both consumers and trainers? Yeah, we've had, a, I mean, we, again, we've done basically zero marketing and kind of all of our user uh, and kind of core metrics are all the lines are going up and to the right. Um, there's really just, again, this, the, the value proposition to the trainer is super obvious and they uh, typically have uh, Instagram accounts with uh, decent followings and, and these audience, this, these audiences, they want to work out with the trainer, but maybe they don't know the trainer personally and they didn't really get the nerve to DM them and go back and forth to find out when they were doing a class. Yeah. Um, and by making it super easy for the trainer to just stick a link in the bio, people sign up. Um, and so by kind of word of mouth acquisition of trainers, uh, and they in turn uh, bring the consumers on. Well, I think that's fantastic. So before we wrap up, tell tell the listeners where they can find it, any tips? Sure. So you can find us in both the iOS and Android app stores. Um, the app is called Rec. Uh, you can also go to our website, get Rec. Which is R-E-C, by the way, not Rec, right. like car Rec, R-E-C. Right, rec is in recreation. Yes. Um, so you can go to getrec.com. Uh, and you can find links to the um, both App Store versions. Um, and yeah, so you can download it. Uh, we have a lot of inventory in Brooklyn, especially. Uh, so if you're interested in like yoga, boxing, meditation, cardio workouts uh, in parks, we do stuff on the rooftop of the Williamsburg Hotel. Um, we have stuff in uh, kind of all parts of Brooklyn uh, and a pretty good uh, inventory in Manhattan. Uh, and again, uh, we're about to kick off a lot of stuff in Miami. Yeah. And if you are totally zoning out because you don't live in either of those places, that's okay. Keep it on your radar, download it on your phone because it's coming to a city near you. Right, Christian? Yeah. And, and, if, and if you're a trainer, um, like you can just go ahead and create, you can download the app. If you live in Phoenix, Arizona, and you have, uh, you want to do a particular kind of class, uh, you can download the app, create the class listing, and you get the link. You can stick it in your Instagram bio. You can text it to your friends and tell them to send it around. Uh, it makes it, you can set up these classes in literally a couple minutes. Uh, and then you can distribute the link however you want. And it, um, yeah, I mean, 
you can uh, start up your own gym wherever you are? Yeah, there's this, there's this trainer at the gym I'm going to. Um, his name's Adam. He's wonderful. He's, everybody loves him. He's got the greatest smile on his face. When I see him, I'm going to tell him about this. So maybe you'll have some business in Colorado soon. Nice. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Um, we're, we're, uh, we're like kind of very active in, uh, New York and Miami, but, um, yeah, by all means, uh, we are, um, totally open and it's super easy for any trainer anywhere, uh, to start on our platform. Well, I think that's great. And if you're motivated to become a trainer, you can also find a place to quickly monetize your business, which is pretty cool too. Right. So it, it lo really lowers the barrier to entry. It's like if it's something, let's say you're really good at, you're really good at yoga and I'm thinking about maybe being a yoga instructor. Sure. Give it a shot. Uh, download the app, create a class, list it for $10, say it's for five people, dip your toe into the water of what it's like to be a yoga instructor. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, this is, this is very exciting. I, you know, kudos to you and congrats and I, I'm very excited to see what comes about this. Please call me before the IPO. Uh, just kidding. No, don't really well, call me. Call me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I, I, I see great things for you. Cool. Thank you. Um, and thanks for having me on your show. And do you guys have like social media stuff as well? Is it get, get rack on like Instagram and Twitter and all that? Jeff? Yeah. So we, yeah, we, we are on all the platforms. Uh, our, our social media handle is uh, get rec team um so at get rec team our our name rec is so short that it makes it hard to get uh just rec um on these different platforms right yeah, yeah. Get rec team okay so yeah you guys can follow that and definitely if you're a trainer sign up if you're a consumer see if there's classes in your area uh and yeah i, th I think that's about it the most important thing is stay happy stay healthy stay fit vitamin c Vitamin D and zinc. I'm not a doctor, just my personal opinion. It's worked for me. It'll probably will work for you. So uh, yeah, don't don't let um, lack of gyms or lack of money or lack of anything keep you from living the best life that you can live. Uh, I appreciate every one of you that has taken the time to tune in. Please don't forget to rate and review us. I would greatly appreciate it. And to our guest, Christian, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy entrepreneurial schedule to uh, share your business with us. I'm very excited. Yeah, thank you. All right, bye. We'll see you next time to find out who's next. Hey, your host here, Madison Malloy. Please make sure to subscribe to the show on all podcast platforms and please rate and review us on iTunes and Spotify. Also, if you have any questions or comments, you can email us at contact at nexttomadison.com. I thank you again for listening. Bye.